International Women's Day celebrates the economic, cultural, and political achievements of women. In 2024, we're specifically talking about investing in women. Well, Kieran Mirage, a media mogul, and also the president of the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce, is here with us to talk about this day, the significance of this day, and what it means to her, and also the rest of Trinidad and Tobago. How do you perceive the role of women in driving economic growth and innovation in Trinidad and Tobago, particularly in the realm of commerce. Where you sit, you have a better idea. We are on the right track because what you have seen is an explosion of women-owned businesses. And I think that speaks volumes for where we are headed as Trinidad and Tobago. And even among our um, Caribbean neighbors, our cousins, you've been seeing a lot more women stepping out into the world of work and taking chances. However, I want to put a caveat to that. There is still a lot of inequality when it comes to access to things like capital. Um, the, the opportunities where people would want to invest in women-owned businesses. Most of these are smaller businesses, MSMs. Um, and, and so I think that that is part of the challenge we still face. So when you look at these women who are probably starting things within their homes as a as an, uh, micro or small, um, and then how do they get the funding to scale? It's still difficult, you know, especially if they're living at home with their husbands. So they may be starting up this small business, but if the light bill or the telephone bill is in the husband's name and they need to open a bank account, it's still, you know, it's still a challenge. Some women men also don't want to give up their family life and take the big risks and I think we are paving the way for a lot of women to be more involved in leadership roles. The Chamber has had um, you know female CEOs previously and um, that one very strong one, Catherine Kumar, when I was in school she was a role model Correct. figure for me. Um, and so the opportunity I had was one that I did not take for granted at all. And, um, and I accepted willingly because I saw it as a way for me to also contribute to my country. Your journey, did you have to still challenge some stereotypes? I still have to challenge stereotypes. The journey isn't over. <laughs> I think um, having a unisex name also True. puts you in a predicament. Sometimes you're going to, oh, you're a woman. So the well, last time I checked, I am. <laughs> um, but, you know, I don't let those things um, put me down. Um, at the end of the day, we are all human beings. And I think that's the first thing we need to do. We need to respect each other as human beings first. And once we do that, then we can better stand up for who we are, what we believe in, and build the confidence that we need. So I think that, um, as I said, the barriers that you put on yourself uh, the only barriers. You need to rise above that at all times. And you would have experienced that, Hema, many times in your life. And I know when we get to the mentorship, I would give a little story about Kieran and myself. Um, but I do want to talk, also when you, obviously you will put your personal stamp to the leadership of the chamber. Specifically, you, you spoke about leadership roles, women, and where they find a space. Have you or what is the chamber doing to assist in, in addressing that gap? So many years ago, the chamber took a conscious decision to ensure that we embraced um, the diversity within the chamber. So, you know, 20 years ago, you would not have had many female board members. Now almost half of our board is female. I mean, typically in Trinidad, I think is one out of five board members is female, you know. Um, and we've been doing that also through our committees. You'll find that there's more gender balance on our committees. So you are seeing um, a lot of initiatives um, that are built in. Not that we've said here's a policy guideline, but because everybody who's involved recognizes that we need to have this sense of equality and we need to support our women. I want to pick up that point, support a woman, because in 2024, um, some people will say, is this day still relevant? There are so many laws, there are so, we talk invest women, but people are going to say that's the capital market. Everyone has access to the same um, programs, same initiatives. Is it still relevant? Why do we invest in women? Why do we need this to invest in women? Hema, I know that you're a new mummy, so you would have recently seen, seen the booth um, registration paper and the booth certificate. Is woman's or mother's occupation rather? Is mother's occupation listed on it? No. <laughs> Why do we need a day? Well, that is true. I know earlier in our conversation, Kieran, you spoke about mentorship and networking and I would like to publicly say Kieran is one of those women who influenced my career, one of my first bosses um, in media many years ago. But 
Talking about mentorship, do women really understand the importance of showing that vulnerability to other women? And do the older heads or the more experienced, let me use more experienced, those who have walked the path before, um, do they embrace that responsibility of saying, I am here, I have to take you with me or show you the way, the way I, you have with me? Yeah, I think some have. I mean, and I still mentor, um, but I, I have seen a uh, growth in the number of women who mentor, especially other women. But I think it's important for us to recognize that the mentorship is not just mentorship in terms of the, the work aspect, but even within the homes and within the communities, right? Mentorship covers, yes, it covers your career, but it covers the advice you would give. It would cover, you know, the 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 perspectives that you're going to share or the insights to let other young women um, learn and understand the ways of the world I learned from my father and the humility of heart I learned from my mother. And I think that that is why um, I'm probably where I am today, mentally and emotionally. And you have to understand you are going to fail. So most people tend to think about failures, women in particular. We tend to think we beat ourselves up. Fail what happens. You have to accept that you are going to have failures. I have had failures, you have had failures. But you know what? Failure is important because that's the only way you're going to learn and grow. So you have to be comfortable with that and you have to learn to let things go. On this day, recognizing women, investing in women, you sit as the head of one of the largest business entities in Trinidad and What is your message to all of the women of Trinidad and Tobago today? Believe in yourself, don't give up, um, understand that you deserve the respect and you are worth it. Mentor at least one woman, make it a promise. Make it a promise, Kieran, thank you so much. And again, we're celebrating women on the occasion or recognizing International Women's Day, invest in women. Jimmy Abood will pay your VAT until Good Friday. Take 12.5% off any item. No exceptions at our Port of Spain and Barataria locations. From now until Good Friday, Jimmy Abood pays your VAT on any purchase. We at Carmino Properties International Limited are all about helping you to realize your dream one home at a time. With over 15 years experience in residential and commercial sales and rentals, property management and property development, you can trust us as your partner for all your real estate needs. Carmino Properties, improving lives one home at a time. We're celebrating International Women's Day, recognizing the strides and the achievements that women continue to make. This year, in 2024, we're talking investing women. But also, what are the choices that women are making? Are we helping and empowering women to make better choices in relation to their healthcare or empowering them to take control of their healthcare? Well, she's no stranger to CNC3 and to her audience. Eh? Dr. Vishali Seem Ryan joins us, and you may know her best from the Doctor's Journal. Looking at, at the big question we look at women empowering girls to make informed decision about their health can you share some specific strategies when we talk about health and women that women can do to take ownership and better decision making in their health care the biggest thing for a, a woman to do is educating yourself for example when i went to high school i wish that i was taught about chronic disease in primary school you can teach primary school kids especially girl, for girls about diet health diet about mental health awareness all of those things make a huge difference most women when you talk about health they think reproductive health they think you're here to be a baby bearing machine and that <laughs> is the end of that so you know we know the bone density we know calcium we know all of the things that women face with with the decrease in muscle mass but for women and their their reproductive health what are some of the challenges that they face what are some of the things that we're more predisposed to and how can we take ownership of that so what I see is that women actually seek help first. They generally do. But the problem is, is that they don't seek help for reproductive health first. So you'd find that we don't talk about problems. We don't pass along information that is needed. Mm -hmm. A lot of professional women now are having conversations about perimenopause, which is something that I think never, I never used to hear that term until mm -hmm. very recently. 
why are we still so in the dark about having conversations about these transitional changes that women go through? So it's the same thing, it, it, it follows along the entire stigma of your period. Women now are ashamed again of, okay, I'm getting hot flashes, my periods are irregular, you know, what, this doesn't make me a woman anymore. Those kind of conversations come up and those feelings uh, need to be dealt with. And I, I think it all comes down to that we shame anything that comes along that line. Speak to the young girls out there and to the women out there to go out and make these informed decisions. What do you want to say to them? So what I would say to these women now, talk about your issues. Talk to your mother, your aunties, your friends, your family. It's important to go out now, seek that information, ask those questions. If you make better decisions on your health, what happens is that there is no delay in treatment. People get help quicker. You see persons getting help in a timely manner. When you have women who are educated about their health, you see the decrease on the economic burden. Get educated. Ask the questions because that's the biggest thing you need to ask. If you don't ask, you don't know. But Dr. Sina, thanks so much. And we you continue you so to much. celebrate women, the achievements of women. And her advice really is to get the information, have the conversations, empower yourself, because through education, that is how you can better live um, a full life. So diet, exercise, you know, but also you can check the medical journal if you need or the doctor's journal to get more information on what you can do to make better decisions. We're celebrating International Women's Day. The successes, the strides, all of the accomplishments. And joining us at this point, we have Latoya Thompson Jacobs. She's a project administrator with the Ministry of Sport and Community Development. Now, my first question is definitely going to be about equal opportunities in sport. Is there equal opportunity in sport? Girls and boys have the same access, is it? Whether girls are taking up that mantle in utilizing the opportunity that they have. Basically, if you want to think about it, when a girl reach the age of puberty, things change. So you might be pulled back from doing certain activities. It will affect you, but you can still work through it. So to get persons to that aspect, including parents to support that, that is where we want to go in terms of getting you still remaining actively involved in any form of sport and activity. What prompted the Pink Green campaign? In terms of going back to the history, it would have been with the Honourable Minister Nishampa Kajud Lewis. Um, she would have um, in 2018 joined the Ministry of Sport and um, given the fact that she is a woman, again, as simple as that, you know, women running, you, you know, sport. No, that's not, not, that's not really heard of. So she had to battle with that as well. And uh, what she did is basically push for the name Pink Rain. She had to fight for that as well. But it was launched in 2019 during the CPL um, women's game. So she launched it there. And from then, it's really blossomed. You know, you see some boys who start off in a club playing together would always be friends. Does sport do the same thing for women? Unless they create something called a lovely group chat. These guys have group chats and they add alumni. But I believe females do that as well, but not to the extent that the guys do it. We have to fix that. Yes, definitely. You know, how are female athletes supporting this campaign and other campaigns and really assisting you and the ministry in their role to bring sport to the women? I believe it was a big topic to touch on would have been hormones with women and sport at our launch. Now from that, I've been getting calls from other persons that would be indicating, you know, they want a partner because touching on the topic was just a touch. It's a big topic to deal with when you're dealing with hormones, the different phases from uh, puberty, PMS, and to menopause. You still have to remain active and it helps. So sport in general will help in all aspects of that. And what we want to do is to ensure that regardless of the state you are in, unless you are physically incapacitated, can't move at all, then keep moving some way or the other. And you're getting the support from um, Men OTT, that's one of the persons that was on, and a lot of persons in different aspects in, in doing female-oriented um, goals and pushing towards that, and they have that under their eyes, they, they want to partner with. 
schools jumping on board. I would send, I did send, because I need to get uh, students involved as well. I'm seeing the teachers signing up. I'm like, so where are the kids? Yeah, where are the kids? I need to have kids involved as well. What is your closing message to the young women in particular, Trinidad? I would like them to be more involved. If it is that you get any resistance from your parents, tell them they can come to. Keep active in whatever space. Because I remember during COVID, we did have our woes and movement. And I remember walking in my yard, steps in and out. I can count even inside the house when rain falling. So you make do with whatever space you have to get yourself active, get yourself moving. We all have 24 hours in the days. What you choose to do with the time will make a difference. If I could just put 10 minutes, five minutes to, for you, just to do something that is worth it. It's worth it, Latoya's closing comments there. As we continue to celebrate International Women's Day, of understanding the value of women seeing themselves as not just athletes, but leaders in sport and shifting the, the gender stereotype to know that sport is everyone's business. So we continue to celebrate International Women's Day investing in women. Jimmy Abood will pay your VAT until Good Friday. Take 12.5% off any item. No exceptions at our Port of Spain and Barataria locations. From now until Good Friday, Jimmy Abood pays your VAT on any purchase. Shaquanas, your first comedy bacchanal in over four years. Randy Glasgow Productions Alternative After Carnival Festival is returning to Center Point Mall in Shaquanas. Sunday, March 10th, 6 p.m. Two persons on one ticket featuring Kenneth Seepersad, The Drunken Saint, The Maco Media Crew, Kwame Weeks, The Midgets, Gabriel Bridge Mohan, The Bacchanal Sisters, Larry Joseph. They're not coming. I find you just always wait until I'm in the road to ask me if I come in. The Trial of the Century with Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro and many more. Get your two persons on one ticket today before they're all gone. At Advertise Outlets Only. For more information, call the 24-hour hotline at 774-5555. Shaguanas, you host the grand finale. The nation is coming for the alternative after Carnival Festival, Sunday, March 10th. We're celebrating International Women's Day. Invest in women. We talk about all the successes and all that we've achieved over the last century or so. Samoya Sandiford Basin, she joins us at this time as we continue to look at providing women and girls with access to quality education and training. How do we ensure that training, particularly in organizations, is accessible and inclusive for female? Well, we need to certainly think about the fact that training and education is a fundamental right for each and every person, female or not. And we have to see the contribution, the value of the contribution that the woman brings to the workplace and not just see the limitations. In fact, women like yourself, we are doing a lot in the organization. We have made great milestones in in different areas, in the corporate environment and entertainment, and so I think it should be respected. So not just implementing policies, but actively making steps towards ensuring that women are included in every opportunity that's available in the workplace. Are employers taking responsibility as well? Well, absolutely. There are opportunities for different types of leave. So parental leave, there, of course, we have that responsibility to care for our children while maintaining our career goals. So I think the organization can could be more inclusive in terms of having flexible options for women as well. Um, apart from that, just being overall inclusive in terms of the dialogue and the way that we treat women in the organization. Don't just bypass a, a, a woman because she is a woman or she's married and she's at childbearing age. It does not stop her from being successful. Pregnancy is not a sickness and it is only a temporary state. Remember that employers. Now, mentorship and sponsorship can be instrumental in in helping women and girls navigate their career paths. How do organizations foster this? 
Mentorship is um, a critical element in terms of promoting education. What it does is empower young women and even anyone who's involved in that type of activity. It empowers them and gives them that view that they can possibly be something in the future. A lot of times, a lot of women, in addition to being um, left out, they're also left on different lenses. So you are judged on appearance, you are judged on location, you are judged on where you are in your career stage, whether you are a young woman, you're too young for this, whether you're too old, how do we navigate that space? You certainly navigate that space as a woman, firstly by knowing who you are, knowing what you bring to the table and being confident in your value as a person. I would always say the more that you invest in your education, the more you do those things, it will give you those opportunities and those open doors that you need. How do we overcome that barrier and give us a hopeful message? You certainly overcome that barrier by constantly speaking out, sharing the information as long as you are familiar or aware that there's an opportunity. You share that opportunity and make persons more aware so they can get access to it. And I'm saying, as my final message, as a young woman, it is important to constantly elevate yourself in every area. Say yes to opportunities, don't run away from it, and take advantage as much as possible. Take advantage of all of the opportunities. You know, I read something the other day. Say yes to everything that comes your way and you never know where you'll end up. And as we continue to celebrate women and all that they have achieved in 2024, as we look back, we truly have achieved a lot. We have a little way to go again to ensure that there's gender equality and that gap is no longer there. But in the meantime, we can celebrate all that we have achieved. Happy International Women's Day. At Carmino Properties International Limited are all about helping you to realize your dream one home at a time. With over 15 years experience in residential and commercial sales and rentals, property management and property development, you can trust us as your partner for all your real estate needs. Carmino Properties, improving lives one home at a time. We're celebrating International Women's Day. We look at women who are doing big things in life. They have shattered the stereotypes. They are breaking all of the, the norms. And when we speak about the world of entertainment, Trinidad and Tobago, no name looms larger than Destra Garcia. Happy International Women's Day, first of all. Same to you, Emma. <laughs> Thank you. But you know, I have to say, off camera, you were just beaming with joy <laughs> when I asked you about your daughter. And yes. I have to ask about, you know, she's now 14. She's now 14. Wow, right? Wow. <laughs> Trinidad and Tobago knows this child when she was born. This child grew up in Trinidad and Tobago, yes. with Trinidad and Tobago. For sure. And you know, like balancing your career, you have had a stellar career doing it all. How, the big question you always ask all women, how did you find that balance? Because a lot of times when I ask some women, they reg they have a certain moment when they say, I, I probably should have been there, I did. Yeah. How did you maneuver that? So for me, I have always had a devoted and doting mother. <laughs> and I knew that my mom also had one of those. Right. And I did not want to break traditions. <laughs> <laughs> so even though I was always very busy, um, before my daughter came, I was always on the road. I, I had a lot of time to sleep. I would go to sleep quite late, wake up late, you know, get everything I need to do done. And then when she came along, I had less and less time for myself. But it was a choice, really. And for me, being a mother is my greatest, greatest achievement. I, I love being a mother. I love being there for her. I love spending my time thinking about what's next for her. What does she want to do? You know, I'm an active part of her life in every single way. As a female in the industry, you know, obviously there'll be women that you looked up to. In business, you always talk about opening the door. Everybody yeah. says they want to be a mentor. And I have to ask in this industry because mm -hmm. you are brands, you are businesses, you are a name and a business by yourself. Yeah. And did anyone ever say, look at this young girl doing her thing, coming up, let me open a door, help you out? I remember Ella Andel meeting me once and telling me, you have to find your voice. You have to find your rhythm. And I was like, what is she talking about? But I did find my rhythm, you know, and I understood what she meant eventually. I remember Denise Plummer meeting with me once and saying that I love that song, Bonnie and Clyde. She said, you know, a lot of the new soca are not really into it, but, you know, you see that Bonnie and Clyde song? That was meant for you. And I feel like I could have sing that song too, you know. 
well. <laughs> and you know, she gave me empowering words. Yeah. Um, singing Sandra, went to school with my mom. So when I met her, she gave me, you know, a motherly advice, Calypso Rose. So a lot of the females that I've met on the journey have given me, you know, you know, some bit of knowledge, more motherly, sisterly, nurturing advice, which I cherish because I needed it yeah. to get through. <laughs> um, and now I'm going to ask you, because you're in a position now, how do you help when you see a young woman? I always, always try to give advice or be there supporting, you know, behind the scenes in one way or the other. For a lot of these females, whether it's just a kind word or a support, same way that others have been there for me in the same way, you know, and any advice I would pass on. I try not to talk too much because not everybody wants to receive. <laughs> but as long as I feel like you're willing to hear me out, I'll say, hey, you know, so, 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 don't worry about this or don't worry about that. It's not the end of the world. It's going to get better. Or I'd give you a heads up. Hey, don't worry. This season, look out for this or look out for that. Or you're doing great. Keep it up. Or next time, try this instead yeah. or whatever. I try. And I think just knowing that you try, it, yeah. it's heartening to know that. I, I spoke to you about motherhood, and I know every time I ask about your daughter, you would it's smile. It's only because you're a mom, yeah, too, and I, you understand. I do, and I think I can now... And I remember writing a blog saying, you know, when, before being a mother, I, on International Women's Day, I would highlight all the business women and yeah. be like, oh, look at them, just climbing the cup. Now I think every woman deserves a round of applause, but I think more, in particular, mothers, working mothers oh, yes. who, who do it. I, I don't know how they do it. Um, but... When you look at your daughter, you know, you said she's my greatest accomplishment. Yeah. What advice do you tell her? Well, my daughter has been work in progress ever since she was a baby. And I was talking to her dad about this just now because I'm looking around at the teenagers now and parents not having full control over them. And ever since she was little, I keep telling her, I say, listen, you're not like everybody else. And I meant that to say that a time will come where you'd want to do this and you can't because I won't let you. A time would come where I'm too mothering and you, you want me to leave and I won't. You know, and I think also instilling the love of God within her. You know, she is a devout, devout child of God. She goes to church every Sunday. Before I even wake up, she's already dressed, ready to go. <laughs> she's doing confirmation now. And, you know, they're so impressed by her knowledge of the Bible. And, you know, I grew up in church and my yes. parents are very devout. So, you know, her and my sisters and my brothers, everybody is, you know, and we're in Lent and we're actually fasting right now. And, and she chose in two years gone, that she wanted to start and I'm like listen you don't need to do this yeah. she's like no mommy if you're doing it I want to do it I you know you're my best friend she, she told me I'm her best friend <laughs> That was amazing. No, that is a moment to that remember. That is priceless to me, that she could tell me that. She said, Mommy, you're my best friend. And if you're doing this, I want to, you know, do what you are doing. And, you know, it's just amazing. I I have no reason that I'm actually speechless. Oh, my God. You have seen the ebbs and flows of this industry. I talk about including diverse, diversity, women from all backgrounds. Do you see that? Like, is it still so segmented that you must look a certain way, act a certain way, be of a certain mm. ilk, that that's when you're going to be embraced by mainstream? So when it comes to the industry and women, there is that stereotype. People still associate sexy and music with females, and that isn't so, you know? I believe, and I want to put that out there for everybody, if you're talented, in whatever field you're in, whether you're a doctor, a dancer, a singer, a lawyer, whatever, as long as you're good, people appreciate that. That comes to the top like cream. I have confidence in me being a good person, a good entertainer, an amazing entertainer. And that confidence I've had my entire life. Forget all these stereotypes and just be great at whatever you do and go out there and let people see how great you are. Destra, thank you so much. <laughs> On this International Women's Day, and when we talk about women who have really changed the way we look at female entertainment. You cannot have that conversation without Deshra Garcia. Happy International <laughs> Women's Day.